Hey everyone, this is Connor. Connor is eight years old and he likes nature, reading books, and eating pie, just like anyone else his age. Connor's also got a loving mom and dad. Here's the thing though, Connor's got some special quirks. He's not into cuddles or being close to others. He prefers to play alone. And chatting with kids his age can be a bit tricky. This is because Connor has autism. And guess what? He's not alone. 1% of children in the world have autism, 80% of which are boys. In this video, we're gonna walk through Connor's journey together. It all started when Connor turned five. His parents noticed something different about him compared to other kids his age. He had trouble keeping eye contact, which made it tough for them to read his emotions. Plus, he'd often dive into his own little world and get super into specific things. They also noticed many other peculiarities. Then, one day, Connor had a meltdown. He just couldn't stand the feeling of the sweater his mom put on him. He was clearly experiencing sensory overload. His parents decided to get a doctor's opinion. The doctor had them fill out a survey with questions addressing Connor's language, behavior, emotions, and some other factors. They also performed a DNA test to rule out any other possible neurological link disorders. After looking at the results, the doctor diagnosed Connor with classical autism. Keep in mind, there are different kinds of autism, like Asperger's syndrome, pervasive developmental disorder, childhood disintegrative disorder, and Rett syndrome, each with varying levels of symptoms. Now you might wonder, what causes this in Connor? Well, let's dive into it. There are several causes to autism, but mainly one of two categories environmental factors and genetic factors. Environmental factors englobe aspects like embryonic problems and any factor that affects the prenatal development of the brain. A good example of that are infections that alter the function of the CPEB4 protein. This is a protein responsible for regulating numerous genes during embryonic development, and failure to do so can lead to mutations in genes that are linked to the onset of ASD. On the other hand, we also have genetic factors. In brief, these are specific mutations or alterations that occur directly in the patient's DNA, which affect both ASD-linked genes and proteins. There are more than 250 genes that are linked to ASD, and more than 70 others that are strongly linked to this disorder. A mutation in any of these could potentially lead to the onset of ASD. A few examples are genes like norexin, neurologin, SH3, synapsin, jefferin, contactin, and there are many others, and they have been all shown to play important roles in the development and function of synapses. Furthermore, most genes involved in the onset of ASD are also linked with other neurological disorders, like fragile X syndrome, schizophrenia, or many others, since they are linked with ASD through common gene mutations. So, ASD patients are much more likely to get other mental disorders like these. As you might now understand, Connor and many other kids in his situation were unlucky to have such condition. So, is there anything we can do to help them? Well, of course. Unfortunately, there is no cure at the moment that can eliminate ASD, nor there is a one-for-all treatment for all ASD patients. But, there are ways to minimize the effects of the syndrome and improve the patient's difficulties. Treatments for ASD patients fall into two main categories, either environmental therapies or medication. Medication involves the treatment of the patient using drugs to control the symptoms. Many common examples include antidepressants to reduce anxiety and depression, antipsychotic drugs to treat severe behavioral problems, or stimulants and non-stimulants, which help in reducing hyperactivity and increasing focus. Other than medication, we have environmental therapies. This involves many therapies in which we address the difficulties of the child and help him improve his skills. For example, educational therapy is a process where we involve the patient in a team of specialists and a variety of activities to improve social skills, communication, and behavior. And this was shown to lead to good progress in children like Connor. Another type of therapy is known as family therapy. And as simple as its name implies, it is the treatment involving the help of the patient's family. This implies the parents and the surroundings to adequately interact with the child to help him improve his skills like communication, behavior, and emotional management. 
Even though there are challenges that come with autism, the symptoms can be worked with and Connor can have a wonderful life enjoying things just like anyone else. We're glad you watched this video about Connor's experience with autism and we hope it helped you learn more about this frequently encountered condition.